This episode of Silly Science with Simon is called The Science of Beards. What? The Science of Bread? So I didn't have to grow this beard? Ah oh well, let's learn about the science of bread. Are you ready? Then let's go. All right. People have been making and eating bread for thousands of years. From baguettes to pita bread, sourdough to white bread, Turkish bread bagels, breadsticks, brioche, and so much more. Bread is made from flour, water, and for some types of bread, yeast and salt, all mixed together and baked. Today, we'll be making a delicious loaf of crusty bread using a really simple recipe. And of course, we'll be talking about the science behind making bread. For this recipe, you will need 500 grams of plain flour, 300 milliliters of warm water, seven grams of dried yeast, one teaspoon of salt, a large mixing bowl, plastic wrap or a damp tea towel, a baking tray with baking paper, clean hands, and an adult to help you. Start by adding the flour, yeast and salt to the mixing bowl and mix these together with your hands. Next, we need to add 300 milliliters of warm water. Turn on the tap and increase the temperature until it stops feeling cold and then make it a bit warmer. Add the warm water to the bowl and use your hands to mix it in. Keep mixing until all of the ingredients stick together and there are no more dry bits. Try to get as much off your hands as possible. Take a few pinches of flour and throw them onto your bench. This will stop your dough from sticking to the bench in the next part. Take the dough out of the bowl and place it onto the floured bench. The next step is to knead the dough for 10 minutes. To do this, fold the dough back on itself and press down firmly with the palm of your hand. Rotate the dough 90 degrees and then keep repeating this. Fold the dough back on itself, press down firmly and rotate 90 degrees. After 10 minutes, test if the dough is ready by lightly pressing a finger into the dough. If the dough bounces back, then you're good to go. But if not, knead it for a few more minutes. Shape the dough into a bowl and place it into a large clean bowl. Cover this with a piece of plastic wrap or a damp tea towel and place it in a warm spot like a sunny window. You now have to wait for the dough to double in size, which will take about an hour. After this, take the plastic wrap off and give the dough a punch. The goal is to pop all the bubbles that have started to form in the dough. So take it out of the bowl and give it another knead for a few minutes. Now take the dough and shape it into a ball again. Place this on a piece of baking paper and cover it with a piece of plastic wrap. This now has to sit in a sunny spot to rise up again. While you're waiting for it to rise, preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius, fan forced, and place your baking tray in the middle of the oven to start warming up. After half an hour, your dough should have risen and be ready to go in the oven. Take the plastic wrap off and then flick some water over the surface. Then run a knife across the top. This will help it form a nice crunchy crust. Get an adult to slide this onto the hot baking tray and cook it in the oven for 35 minutes. While that's cooking, let's answer the question that you're probably thinking. Are donuts, which are made from flour, water and yeast, a bread? Well, some people don't think so because they're fried and not baked. So let's just get rid of this. What you probably wanted to know is how does baking a mixture of flour, water, yeast and salt turn it into a loaf of bread? Let's start with the flour. Flour contains starch, a type of carbohydrate made from long chains of simple sugar molecules. Flour also has special molecules called enzymes. When we add water, these enzymes are able to break the starch down into pairs of sugar molecules. This is where the yeast join the party. Yeast are single-celled fungi. They produce their own enzymes that break down these pairs of sugar molecules into single sugar molecules called glucose. They then eat the glucose to get energy and produce ethanol and carbon dioxide as waste products through a process known as fermentation. The ethanol will evaporate during cooking, but what happens to the carbon dioxide? Along with starch and enzymes, flour contains proteins. Proteins are large molecules made up of a chain of smaller molecules called amino acids. The two main proteins in flour are glutenin and gliadin, which we simply refer to as gluten proteins. 
When water is added to these proteins, they start to join and bond to each other, forming a stretchy network. Mixing and kneading the dough helps more and more protein molecules join together. This forms an even larger and stretchier network, which is a bit like bubble gum. Just like blowing a bubble, the carbon dioxide forms thousands of bubbles in our stretchy dough. When we put the dough in the oven, the bubbles get bigger because gas expands when it's heated. Eventually the dough cooks and locks into place, leaving empty holes all throughout the bread. Let's try that one more time. And that's the science behind bread.